Hi, I'm Parker Miley. I'm a junior at St. Mary's Memorial High School and a member of Wayne Street United Methodist Church. And this is Pastor Tim. Tim Benjamin. I am the pastor here at this church and uh, looking forward to having a conversation with you today. Right now you're listening to the Rage Podcast, which is real answers to general events. And today we're talking about the Tower of Babel. Today we're talking about the Tower of Babel. It's a little story from the Old Testament that I think most people misunderstand. And uh, today Parker and I are going to take a look at this together and see what's there. So, Parker, what do you know about the Tower of Babel? Off the top of your head. Tower of Babel, off the top of my head. Big tower. Big tower. That ancient people built to ancient go to the heavens. Built to go to the heavens. That's right. And, uh, you know, I, one of the results of that was, as most people know, is the languages were scrambled, which means I spent like six years in French class because of this story, <laughs> which I'm not bitter about that. But uh, honestly, the only phrases I remember, I can't repeat on this church podcast. So, all right. So here we are. We look at the Tower of Babel. We're going to start reading the story together. We find the story in Genesis chapter 11. And uh, just a chance for us to kind of find out what's going on. So I'll just start reading. This is Genesis 11 verse 1. At one time, all the people in the world spoke the same language and used the same words. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia and they settled there. They began saying to each other, let's make bricks and harden them with fire. Because in this region, bricks were used instead of stone and tar was used for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches to the sky. That will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. What do you think about that, Parker? Sounds like a good idea. Sounds like a pretty good idea. Building bricks, all still got the same goal there. That's right. Uh, Busy. People doing a project. I mean, that's what people do when they're unified, right? I mean, you think about a sports team. They're coming together for a goal. It's exactly what these guys yeah, were doing. That's exactly what they were doing. And, I, and uh, their goal then was to build this tower. And the idea was the tower was going to be so tall that you could see it from anywhere on earth. So if you wandered away and you didn't know how to get home, you could be like, oh, look, there's, there's the, the tower. tower. We're yeah. going to head that way. So that was the idea, to keep everybody together, unified. U- unity was their goal. And that's what they wanted. So as you can imagine, with a project of this magnitude going on, uh, God wanted to find out about this. And so he went down to check it out. So this is verse 5. But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. I mean, if you were looking at, say, a classroom, if you were a teacher, Mm -hmm. And uh, you were teaching them about, uh, you know, math, let's say. Math. Okay, and, and in this process, uh, they learned their multiplication tables so well that they could recite them back and forth. As a teacher, would you feel pretty good about that? I'd, I'd feel amazed as yeah. a teacher. Goal accomplished. Absolutely. Done. Absolutely. That, that's winning, right? Mm-hmm. And, and so this sounds good, doesn't it? I mean, when you say what God says here, sounds good. Man, nothing, these guys, nothing stops them. God sounds very happy. In yeah. Very Does, happy he in doesn't sound people. angry. He doesn't sound uh, upset. Uh, he just says, man, they're taking on this big project. Kind of proud of these guys. Congratulations, you guys. Yeah. So, so everybody in the, in the area of Babylon is doing well, and uh, they're working on this tower. So God goes down and check it out. So here's what God says. Come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. And that way, the Lord scattered them all over the earth, and they stopped building the city. Now, here's my question, Parker. Okay. There's something missing in this story up to this point, okay? So you've got everybody said, hey, we really, we're we really unified. We really love each other. We really think this is great. We want to live here and, and stay here forever. We want to build this monument to make sure we don't get confused and end up someplace else. You know, the weather here is great. The crops here are great. The animal here are great. Everything about this place was awesome. They wanted to stay forever. Yes. Okay? Yeah. God came down, check it out, said, man, these guys are really doing well. Really doing well. Well off. But I can, I'm going to now confuse the language mm-hmm. to move them out. All right. What's missing? What's the thing that's not here that most people interpret in this story? Um, it's not a punishment from God. God's God is never angry. angry. Yeah. Yeah, God is never angry in this story. Good job, Parker. God is never angry in the course of this, this entire passage. He never says this is a punishment. Now, look. I was sitting in, in uh, French class with Miss Dubois. It felt like punishment. I'm not going to lie, Miss Dubois, if you're watching. I'm sorry about that. But uh, no, that's not what the point here. The point was God was rewarding them for the good work they were doing. Or could it have been taken as a challenge? Sure. God was giving them. They've seen They've seen that they were mastering the building of the tower mm-hmm. quite well. Mm-hmm. So God says, let's challenge them and 
open up their horizons mm -hmm. with the diversity that mm -hmm. was given to them. So I agree. So they're trying to change it up and get people to move out, to move over the whole face of the earth because God wanted them to see more than just this area where Babylon was. I think that's a good interpretation. He wanted to, to spread them out, to give them diversity. It was as a reward. You guys are good enough to build the tower. I'm going to give you something better than the tower. Instead of building this big monument, you're going to move all over the face of the earth and see palm trees and arctic circles and penguins and, and all these other things. Beautiful nature. Yeah, all the stuff that's out there. Okay? All right. So, uh, verse 8. In that way, the Lord scattered them all over the world, and they stopped building the city. That's why the city is called Babel, because that's where the Lord confused the people with different languages. In this way, he scattered them all over the world. Not a punishment, guys. Uh, ba Babylon and, and the diversity and the fact that we all have different ideas, we all have different backgrounds, we all have different interests. Um, that's not a bad thing. It's not a punishment. No, it's sounds, not a punishment. Sounds like a good thing. And right. It's taken in that way. Yeah. Very good thing. So what would you think then if uh, somebody came along and said, well, you, we have to you know, stamp out everybody who doesn't agree with it. I mean, we see this all the time today, don't we? Oh, all the time. Yeah, pe people who don't agree, we have to destroy them. We have to destroy their reputation, destroy their career. We have to get online and, and flame them in every way we can think of. Somebody that doesn't think my way, cut them out. Yeah. And uh, what, what I, you know, I would contend those people are trying to do is they're trying to undo what God did in Genesis chapter 11. Take away the gift that God has given right. us. Right, and go back to the previous gift. It would be like... Uh, you know, me going back to one of the old cars I used to drive instead of the Beetle, which I would the never glorious done. Beetle. The glorious Beetle. You know that's right. So yeah, why, why would I want to trade something something uh, you know new for something that was? And I and I think that a lot of times that's what everyone's trying to do is return us back to the Tower of Babel to bring everybody together to be exactly the same, to agree on everything, and, and to think the same way, to talk the same way, to believe the same way. I just don't think that was God's design. I don't think it was either, reading Genesis 11 here. Mm -hmm. You see, we are supposed to be different. Mm -hmm. We all have, that's what God has designed for us. All of us are supposed to think different. We all talk different. We all have different languages, different places all around the world. Our differences is what makes us stronger. Mm -hmm. Just like how God saw the building of the Tower of Babel and there being a strong unity mm -hmm. there. Same thing as he what is what he wants out of us today. Mm -hmm. He wants to see, oh, we're all different. Let's divide and call. Let's mm -hmm. you know strengthen our unity there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's because of this uh, we can go to an Italian restaurant or a Mexican restaurant or a, you know an Indian restaurant. I mean, you can go to all different kind of places, enjoy different food, different cultures, different music, different ideas. Uh, and all of that is supposed to be celebrated. And this idea we have today, where we have to you know just punish everybody into being just like us i think is I, I think that's contrary to what god wants and we see this manifested itself in a lot of different ways parker you think of any ways today that we see this idea of forcing people to be like us forcing people can can i use cancel culture cancel culture I cancel think gonna... culture i um, mean if you don't think of what the if you're not thinking the way the big dog's thinking you must be cut out and that's that's only going to weaken and destroy the unity that the people have had. I mean, the uni unity is the key there. Mm -hmm. If we can all understand that that person's going to think different and that's his own opinion, well, it's my it's my job to get over that and to continue on. I'm not going to hate him or her, but I will love in the fact the fact that they have the right to their own opinion mm -hmm. and believe the way they want to believe because that's the gift from God that he has given us. Yeah, the, the idea of different perspectives. Think about all the advancements and things that have happened down through the years that we wouldn't have if not for diversity. And one of the some of the dangerous weapons uh, that people use in order to force people to be the same is they'll threaten jobs, and, you know, threaten uh, livelihoods, uh, they threaten lives, threaten you know whatever. You know, we see this a lot in, in things going on today. Is that people who aren't getting their way and whatever thing they want to you know you know break things and threaten people and stuff. It's just not good. And and one of the ways that we see really clearly is uh, when somebody you know, gets into legal trouble because they don't agree and, and people start saying things that aren't true. And that's they'll what say, become... They'll say anything to win. It's, it, it doesn't become who is right. It will become I want to win. Yeah. We, lose, we lose all understanding of how this person may have the right to believe that, but it offended me somehow. And I'm going to completely... I'll lie. I will do anything I can 
to making sure that person doesn't continue with that any further. And to give us an example of exactly how that works, we have a little segment here on The Rage that we like to call Second Level with Parker. Libel, the criminal act of publishing a false statement to damage one's reputation. Thank you for that, Parker. Great explanation of what libel is. And uh, we appreciate you all joining us this week on The Rage. This is something uh, Parker and I are hoping to do every week. Parker, any closing words you got, buddy? Any closing words? Don't tear down someone who has a different opinion from you because truly it's a gift from God that they can think about their own opinions and believe in what they believe in. It's what makes us all our individual selves through the unity that we have with Christ. About drawing us together, uh, even in our differences, we love each other anyway. So everybody, y'all be good to each other, behave yourself, and uh, we'll see you next time.